Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the grid warp node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and bring in a grid warp node. Grid warp. And we'll input it on our footage. Now the grid warp node is basically used to, if I go in this destination, to warp an image. So you can use the grids to warp an image however you want. And let's reset that. So the way this operates is when you first put it in and anytime you go back, it's going to go to your destination. You always want to start in your source. So you have your source, which is what your grid is set up to and your destination, which is what's being output. You have uh, three different magnet types selected means you're going to select the individual here let me turn this on destination the individual uh points if you have on region you can do a region of the points if you have it on magnetic it's going to kind of magnetically push all these points around and within that you can change your distances which you have a bigger magnet or a smaller magnet same with your region you have your uh, strength how strong it is you have your grid size and let's refresh this before we start going into grid size you have your grid size which will give you more grids on the x-axis and the y-axis you have subdivisions now your subdivisions if we go and click this s up here you can actually see our subdivisions and we got to be on our destination to see it so if we lower our subdivisions you can see it's going to be bigger subdivisions so you're going to have less smooth warping as opposed to higher subdivisions will give you smoother warping but it'll be uh, more taxing on your uh, GPU. Turn that off. Now you've got your uh, grid center, which will center the grid. Your angle, which will angle the grid. Your grid size, which will resize the grid. And down here you have source select, and this is just to view your destination to see how it's kind of working. Down here you have uh, your source edit. If we have none, we're not gonna have any grid. If we have a grid, we'll have the grid. If we have it on a rectangle, you can resize your grid on these corners. And this is your center, so you can drag your center around. So if we go back up to edit grid, you can see it's smaller. And we have edit line. And let me refresh this first. Edit line. We can go here and go around her face. And it is just snapping a grid around her face. And we can also go in here and if we select this, we can change this to smooth, to smooth, and edit how we want. Now, once you use edit line and you create a, uh, a grid, you can change your point tolerance to give it more or less points based on your uh, your background. Your oversize amount, which is your overall grid that's extended beyond, and your snap distance. So you can change all that. And if you hit this uh, set mesh to, mesh to entire image, it's going to reset all these points to the entire image. Let's delete this and get a fresh grid node. So basically, I mean, you, I'm sure you've seen YouTube videos out there. People make people wink and, you know, you, but we, we don't do still images here. This is, this is a video. So say, uh, we wanted to do something with her eye or we're not going to make her wink, but, uh, we'll do something with her eye. Now, first thing you want to do is be in your source destination and 
our size. We're going to resize our grid. So it's just going around our eye. Change that selected so it's not so crazy. And we can move it around. We'll bring it up so it's centered on our eye. Get our size in there. So now we've got our grid around our eye. But if you notice, this is video. And your grid, even though it's you can click this to animate anything you want. We can also throw a tracker down and use a tracker. So let's throw just a regular tracker. And we'll track this. So let's grab our IntelliTracker, stick it on our eye, and let's track forward. There we go, we've got our track. So if we go to our grid and we go down here to center, if we right click, we can hit connect to, go to the IntelliTracker and select position. So now our grid is following her eye. So once we have that set, you can go ahead and hit copy source to destination. And if we go to destination, you can see we now have that Tracked around her eye and even though the grid's not moving it's moving with your image so now you can go in make any edits you want to make close your eye up and we can take a merge node to our background from here to our foreground but before we get any actual motion you can see it's still staying stagnant we also have to go to our destination our center right click connect to IntelliTractor position now our eyes moving around so we've got that edit following her eye this kind of boring stuff so let's make something cool we will bring in a mocha pro node so we can get some tracking in and we're just going to kind of track her around this neck area And we will go to stabilize and let's change this to about 20 fold. And we will save this and export our data. So what can we do with this? Let's do something uh, kind of weird with it. So we are going to take this data and add a grid warp. And there, I kind of fast forward this so uh, you didn't have to see all that because uh, it gets kind of mundane and tedious after a while. 
so uh, basically we've got all of our stuff kind of animated in the way we want enough right now and we're going to take another one and add another grid warp and I'm just gonna warp this differently and I'll probably fast forward this part too because it does get tedious <laughs> these two together Then here, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just kind of add some effects on here. So I'm going to add a glow. effect going on in our background using the grid warp nodes to warp our background and add some weird effects to it so that is the grid warp node i will see you in the next node breakdown